Hey guys, Zero here, and this is going to be a different format of a video. It's a, I guess you could call it Zero's rant time. Um, hopefully you don't mind there not being any footage of the anime in the background. Instead, you're going to watch some, I guess, montage clips of my year one and year two Destiny experience. Uh, and have fun with that. I might upload more of that to the gaming channel at a later time but for now I'm I have a big catalog of it and I've been really wanting to share with people but I have no idea how to so yeah it goes in the background I'm sorry guys for the shameless plug of my destiny gameplay anyway on with the topic of today Dragon Ball Super now I want to start off by saying that up up until the most recent episodes, I have been fairly satisfied with everything that's been going on in Dragon Ball Super. And I, I can't deny that. I I've missed Dragon Ball. I've missed I've missed following Goku. Um when Dragon Ball Super was first announced, I went back and I watched all the episodes from start to finish. And I there's some there's some things that uh we're kind of hand waved across, but in the long run, you know, it uh, it's still a fantastic series. And as a fan from my childhood, I've been looking forward to it. Now, with the introduction of Dragon Ball Super, we get a few new abilities. We get Dragon Ball, or we get. Super Saiyan God forms, and we get the introduction of all these different God characters. I mean, we had God characters before with uh, King Kai and Supreme Kai, and obviously we have the Great Dragons. Um, and you know, all that's all that's cool. I love the new characters. They all they're all unique. They're all fun. Um, and all the old characters are all pretty much the same. You don't really have all that much changes. Well, Gohan is a little different. Videl is still there. We got the introduction of Pan. Uh, Krillin. Krillin is now a police officer. It's funny. It's comical. And, of course, we got Goten and Trunks and Bulma. And the the whole crew is there, and it's it's a good time. When it all starts out, and we get the introduction of the the Super Saiyan God form, you know, it was it was awe inspiring. It was it was. I had goosebumps. I loved it. And then, a few episodes later, we get this, you know, Super Saiyan God has now become Super Saiyan Red because the introduction of Super Saiyan Blue or Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan as if the Super Saiyan Red was the new base and Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan is the new ascended form which also brings a question when are we going to get Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan 2 or 3 but Topics for another time. Super Saiyan Blue is now the new supreme form. It's the all-powerful one. It's the one that just kicks the most ass. And they've done a lot with this new form. And I mean a lot. And it's amazing. It really is. I love it. Vegeta and Goku are on a totally new level to what they were in Dragon Ball Z. And it just makes what comes next a lot harder. Now, if you haven't watched the series up to episode 67, then obviously spoilers. And... That's the end of the Future Trunks arc, which is 
the most recent. So this is only two weeks old. In episode 65... Zamasu, which is the antagonist at the moment, and Black Goku, which we find out is Zamasu in Goku's body, by way of a wish, Dragon Ball wish, they fused together and made this ultra-powerful fused Zamasu. I'm going to fuse with myself. I am going to fuse with myself and become Ultimate Zero. I wish. Anyway, they did this with the effect of the Pataro rings, which we've been introduced to before. They were introduced to to us in the Majin Buu arc way back in Dragon Ball Z. And it's not... And Vegito is not the only person who made the fusion you know we also had supreme kai and his assistant and we also had the witch baba and uh, i think she fused in with some other some other lady and became better looking i guess and that was all comical and that, that was fun but the Pitaro is basically force two beings to become one whole being. And it's permanent. Everything that we've known is that it's permanent, cannot be undone. Interestingly, at the beginning of this arc, when we're reintroduced to the Supreme Kai, he is back to his old little blue skin self. And the the fusion was waved off as a wish granted by the Dragon Balls. Okay, cool. I can deal with that. But keep that in mind. So, after Fusamasu shows up and just starts wrecking house, let's be fair here, completely creams Vegeta, Trunks, and Goku, future Trunks. Completely creams him. And take... He, he's basically able to take all of their power and just shrug it off like it's nothing. Like, come on, guys. You can do better than that. And that's mostly where we end episode 50, or 65. 66 comes around, and it's right where we left off. Goku had fired off a Kamehameha wave and Zamasu is beating it back with his own energy. But somehow Goku ends up, you know, pushing it a little little further and, you know, has has a little triumph against Zamasu, fused Zamasu. And that's cool. But you can tell that it took a lot out of him. And Zamasu... Still just shrugged it off. And they they regroup and uh, you know meet back with Supreme Kai. And Supreme Kai also has Patara rings. So obviously the the next question is Hey, why don't we fuse? You know, beat beat fire with fire. Beat a fusion with fusion, you know, that's how it works. Cool! I've been wanting to see Vegito again for a very long time. And I never thought it'd happen again because Vegeta hated the idea. So, this time around, we get a, a rule. We get a new rule. A new canon. The Patara rings only permanently fuse godlike beings so only the kai the supreme kai king kai zamasu is a kai they only can permanently fuse those beings now this is weird because technically goku 
technically, Black Goku is not 100% a god. So how is he permanently fused with Zamasu? But at the same time, Black Goku is part of God. I mean, he has God key. So, you know, it makes sense why Black Goku and Zamasu confuse. So why is this limitation put on Vegito? Especially after Vegito turns into a Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. It's Super Saiyan Blue. He's a god now. So what's the deal? Goku and Vegito have, or Goku and Vegeta have made the base form of the Super Saiyan God a part of them. So they have God Key. They they are in essence part God already. So wouldn't this Bataro fusion permanently fuse them? I mean, that's that's what I think. But hand wavy Toriyama decides that he doesn't want to permanently fuse them together and try to you know break them apart some other way. So okay, uh, you got an hour. I can deal with that. An hour seems like a very long time in Dragon Ball. I mean, you think back to the most infamous fight, Goku versus Frieza, the longest five minutes in anime history. An hour could be an epic hour. And that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting this to drag on for another three, four episodes. I want, I want Vegito to just kick all wholesale ass. But, ten minutes into the episode, well, give or take, Vegito and Fuzumasu, they are, they are on equal footing, you know, or more or less. Zamasu is kicking the shit out of, kicking the shit out of, Vegito, but it, it's going back and forth. Vegito is laying some massive hits, and you can just see Zamasu just breaking apart. But he, he has some other things going on with immortality. Um, yeah. So, and he, he grows back together, and yeah, continues fighting. Now, I have no problem with this. This is epic, and I'm expecting this to go on forever. So when Vegito is like, final Kamehameha, um, you sure that's your final one? I doubt that's your final one. And then goes and throws a punch, and you see the energy, energy in the punch, and then all of a sudden, poof. Vegito is no more, and it's back to Goku and Vegeta. And I'm sitting there going, what the fuck? Pulling my hair out and shit. So much wasted potential. I wish Toriyama had kept going with this, because it could have been, or maybe it's not Toriyama's fault, maybe it's, Maybe it's more Toei, Toei animation. But regardless, an, you said an hour, come on. <laughs> and then you gave us 10 minutes of on-screen time. That's what, two minutes of universal time in, in the anime? Come on, guys. But... In the end, Fusumasu gets the upper hand because the fusion broke and Vegeta and Goku are exhausted, as they should be, and he pounds them to the dirt, literally. In epic fashion, of course. 
And in the meantime, we get we get a shot back to Trunks, future Trunks. And he's picking up a broken shard, his handle, to his sword. Now, uh, that's all cool, and I love, I love Trunks' sword. Uh, I've, I've always wanted to make one. I've attempted to make replicas myself. And I've always loved the art of swordsmanship, so I, I'm strongly for picking up the sword. Yeah, you could probably do something else with it, I mean, but it, he only has like a seven inch broken blade of a sword. So what does he do? He makes a lightsaber out of it. Literally. Like he he imbues the sword with his energy like he has seen Zamasu do, but hasn't seen I don't think he saw Vegito do it. But I'm still not sure how Vegito learned it. But he he forces the energy through the sword and makes a blade out of out of his energy. And I I can see where this is stretching it a bit, but I can see where it's still coming from, sort of. So he goes ahead and he takes his newly made lightsaber, and he goes to save the day. Now, the problem I have with this is Vegito was a Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan God. He was part God. And Trunks is a lowly mortal who can't even surpass Super Saiyan 2. And these these numbers are great deals in this universe. So much to the point, Super Saiyan God, the base form, is universally crack-worthy. The fight between Beerus and Goku as a Super Saiyan God shook the universe. And Trunks is supposed to surpass Vegito, who was Super Saiyan Blue, who is a fusion between Goku and Vegeta, the two strongest Super Saiyans of the time. And you're supposed you're supposed to I'm supposed to believe that Trunks is any sort of stronger? I I don't buy it. I can't fathom how this is how this is going to work. But Trunks rushes in and he stops the final attack with his blade. Cool. It's a blade. It could shift the difference. It could shift the balance. Maybe. But in the end, it doesn't. And he starts to get his ass kicked again. And by the end of the episode, Trunks has found a way to gather all the energy in, in the world and build a spirit bomb in in essence. It's not it's not really a spirit bomb. It's sorta of like the Genki Dama, which Japanese for spirit bomb. It it's sort of like that, but I don't he doesn't know this. He doesn't know how to do this. He shouldn't. There's no way. But somehow, he gathers all this energy. He makes he makes a spirit bomb, and it doesn't take forever. Well, that, that's a problem. Spirit bomb's known for taking forever. And he forces all this spirit bomb energy into his sword and creates this super great sword of overcompensation plus 13 lightsaber of energy and it looks ridiculous <laughs> like absolutely ridiculous just him moving it around i'm like i'm actually cringing at this point watching the episode it's 
What are you doing? <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to laugh or cry. And with this plus 13 great sort of overcompensation, one shots Z fused Zamasu. Trunks as a Super Saiyan 2 plus, I can only imagine, beats this god with a spirit bomb that was created in a matter of seconds. And I have a number of different problems with this. A, a great number. The spirit bomb gets more powerful the more that you the more time that you spend in creating it. The spirit bomb also needs a massive amount of energy in order to be any sort of effective. And I mean massive. The one that the one that attacked Frieza was from every organism on the planet. The trees, the bugs, everything. He even reached out into other parts of the solar system to get it. And still, that wasn't quite enough for Frieza. For Frieza. Way back when. And from all that I could tell in this episode, there was only like 30 people on Earth. And that's the only time that Trunks took was those, those few people. So the scaling here is horrible. Absolutely horrible. And I don't understand where all of this is coming from. I mean, canonicity being as it is, none of this should be possible. And it's so infuriating that this, this all happened. I was, I was told an hour of Vegito time and I got 10 minutes of on-screen time. Maybe. And then in the same episode, I I am forced to witness this ass pullery of a finale, and in the end, it made me feel let down and dis disappointed. And I literally don't know how to feel about this. And that's also not quite the end of it. Because in episode 67, we find out that Fuzumasu wasn't quite done. And he's become this entity. And this entity is now trying to work its way into the fabric of the universe. Okay, I, I can kind of see this. And then Goku hits a button. Literally hits a button, and kills the universe. <laughs> I don't know how this entire thing fits. And it just, it seems like a filler episode of it it seems like this this two episode arc was a filler episode of epic proportions and it just lets me down and i i don't know how to feel about it <laughs> and that's pretty much all i can say and unfortunately as much as I want to go into more detail about episode 67 with, you know, the Omni King showing up and the time machine coming back and all that stuff, 
It literally boils down to Goku hit a button and finish the fight. And that's it. Everybody goes back to what's going on and everything's good. Literally. Like, I can pull up a picture of Goku pulling out the button out of his pocket. (laughs) (laughs) To me, this is not the Dragon Ball I was looking forward to. I enjoyed the universal universal tournament you know the, all the fights there were long drawn out and satisfying in every way beerus extremely satisfying the return of frieza eh, a little bit of a stretch but still satisfying what happened in dragon ball what happened in Episode 66 and 67, I personally feel that this was a huge mistake. And I need more episodes for this arc. And I know I'm not going to get it because I've already watched 68, which came out. And it's a cutesy filler episode and they're just going to move on with the story. So I'm forced to believe that all of this happened in a blink of an eye and Goku pushed a button and said it's okay. Now, I could probably rant on a little bit more, but my recording time, at least, is going up on 28 minutes, 28 and a half So I think I'm going to go ahead and end this little rant here. Hopefully I have enough footage to uh, fill up this this little episode of, I don't know, I don't even want to know what I call it. I don't even know what I want to call it, but that's it for this time on Otaku Saga. I'm Zero. Hopefully you know all the tags you can go here for our otaku saga talks you can go here for our patreon you can go here to subscribe and that's it for this time on i guess zero's rant see you next time